Hey guys, it's Madeline Tamina. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I am a Roman Catholic YouTuber and I do videos on Catholicism, some apologetics, and some Catholic lifestyle. So anything Catholic you can find here. So please like and subscribe down below so you can get more content like this and check out my other videos. So about a week ago, I asked you guys to ask me questions down in my community tab so I can do a Q&A of questions you guys have for me. So some of you guys delivered. And so today I'm going to be doing a Q&A of all of y'all's questions and giving my opinion. Some of it is going to be opinion. Some of it will be fact, but you just have to balance that. and I'll let you know if it's my opinion or not. But again, please like this video if you liked it and leave your comments down below for any more video ideas you would like me to do next and yeah let's get on into the video okay so i'm just gonna have my computer right here with the questions on it so i can answer so the first question was asked by ember thank you ember um so ember asked thoughts on veiling at mass and what's your favorite saint so thoughts on veiling at mass so I attend the Novus Order Mass, and I do not veil there. I see nothing wrong with veiling. I think it's such a beautiful thing. I just haven't really felt the calling to veil, because to me, veiling is like something personal you have with God. And for me, I actually struggle with like pride a lot. I mean, like everyone does. <laughs> like That's like the biggest sin, pride. But to me, if I veiled, I feel like I would be drawing more attention to myself. And I know that's not the way you should look at it, but people veil to humble themselves. But to me, if I did it, I feel like I would be drawing more attention to myself. So that's how I would feel with it. So I personally do not veil, um, but I think it's a beautiful thing and I definitely would consider doing it. But um, I actually do have a veil that I did wear at a um, TLM mass and i really did like it it just like i didn't wear it properly so it like got on my way and stuff so like i have worn a veil before i just don't wear it regularly um but i do think it is a beautiful thing and i think you definitely should if you are feeling the call and then she also asked what my favorite saint was so my favorite saint is saint claire of assisi and i just loved her basically my whole life my dad used to read me stories about St. Clara of Assisi um, when I was little. I don't know why, maybe. I think I just always was like, oh, I love the name Clara. So he's like, oh, there's a saint, St. Clara of Assisi. So I've never been outside of the country, but my parents did go to Italy a couple years ago and they visited um, St. Clara's tomb and everything. And it's so beautiful. And I just love her because of her devotion to the Eucharist. And I just think she's such a beautiful person to follow and how she gave up her life because she saw her friend doing it too. And I don't know, it just shows the importance of good friendship. And I love her devotion to the Eucharist. So yeah, go check out St. Clair Vassisi. The next question was asked by Angry Potato 134 So he asks, if you were a religious sister or nun, what religious order would you choose? So um, I definitely thought about this a lot. And if I were to choose one, I would probably become a Dominican sister. So I go to a school run by Dominican sisters, actually. And I just think that's something I would do. I could not be like, I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm not, I'm not going to really say I'm not. But to me, it would be really hard to be like a nun that like sits in like solitude all day. Like I couldn't do that. Like my, I would wrestle with my thoughts too much. And maybe God's calling me to do that. But um, if I could like choose one, I'd probably be a Dominican sister because they get to be out and they get to teach about their faith and like that would be so much fun because I love like teaching and so I could go out and like teach theology or like a philosophy class and I think that's really awesome. The only thing is, is they're really smart too and they're all around smart with stuff and I'm not good at math and science so I don't know how I would do that. But that or the poor Claire's because St. Claire of Assisi. So yeah, I don't know, by Dominican or Poor Claire's. The next question was asked by Diego Cervantes. Hopefully I said that right. Um, so Diego says, what is your opinion on the metaverse and can people have AI partners or spouses in the future? Um, so my opinion on the metaverse, 
um i think that is actually a very bad idea <laughs> the metaverse um yeah so i think that going into a universe and if you guys don't know what it is basically it's living in a virtual reality you can buy and sell property on there and meet with people um so i don't think like the metaverse of going in there for like business ventures like if you're like trying to show um this is how like a model of a new building we need to build i don't think that's like bad like that's obviously useful for your work but um something like going in there to like meet with your friends or to just like spend hours like in there like that's your reality i do not think that is a good idea at all i feel like that undermines um human dignity first off because like how lazy are we getting that like oh we're not gonna meet with our friends but we can just go in there and like play with them as a virtual character not who they actually are and like second off that's just so lazy <laughs> like God literally gave us this beautiful earth and now we're going to become like gods, create our own and spend time in there just so we can pass time. Like, I just think that's so pointless. Just saying. Sorry if that was harsh, but that's my thoughts. And then along with that, he asked about the AI partners or spouses in the future. I hope that's a joke because, <laughs> um, no, <laughs> what? I, I've never even heard of that. I, I can't even believe that, but no. No, you, you can't, like, just like I wouldn't marry a lion, I'm not going to marry something, just cre a creation of humans. Like, I'm not going to marry a chair that's creation of humans. Like, no, that, no. <laughs> then Cecilia Grace asks, what does it mean to really love God? So, um, I actually really like this question. So, what does it mean to really love God? When in the Bible, someone asks God, um, what do I need to do? Like, I follow all the commandments, I do all this, but what do I need to enter heaven? He says, like, drop and leave all your belongings and come follow me. So, to enter heaven is to be in the full relationship with God, so that's like a love, right? And so, God calls us to drop everything for him, and that that is, like, true love, like, giving up everything, like, giving up yourself for someone. So, that that's what it means to really love God. Um, but I just want to touch on something i was reading benedict the 16th um, book on i think it's called church and the apostles or jesus and the apostles or jesus in the church something like that and basically it's about um well the church like after jesus and like the apostles and things like that obviously in the name but in there it says something super profound and beautiful and i was like whoa so um Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. And in the Greek translation of the Bible, Peter did not answer with agape, which is like the self-sacrificing love to Jesus. He said, I love you, philia or whatever, with um, with meaning that he loves Jesus as like a brother. Like he loves him so much like that, but not really like the whole self-sacrifice, like I give myself up to you. So Peter answered that. And you know what Jesus said back to him? He said the philia type of love because he came down to Peter's level and said, I love you too. Peter, that's all Peter said he could give to Jesus right now. And Jesus said, you know what? Like, I like I accept that. Like, that's all your capacity is for me. And so like, I will give you myself wholly in that way to you too. And so I think that's really beautiful that like we all have a different relationship with God and we all have different personalities. Um, we all have a like I said, different relationship with God that we're going to love him in certain capacities that other people can't. Some people are called to, like I said, the poor Claire's, but then some are called like to Dominican sisters, right? And Dominican sisters, they do take a vow of poverty, but it's much different. They're out, like, not like having to feed the homeless and stuff. Like usually they're working at like Catholic schools or something. Like that's not that bad or, you know what I mean? So we each have our own cross to bear and we love all love God differently. So really it's a personal thing that you should ask God about, but yeah, giving yourself up freely and then however that looks to you. Legolas asks thoughts on gender roles. So this is a pretty big like topic. Like I probably have to make a long video about this, <laughs> but thoughts on gender roles. So in the Bible, we um, see that passage where it says that women should be subordinate or wives or women, whatever, should be subordinate to their husbands. And a lot of people are like, what? Like, so we're just going to bow down to our husbands. And let me explain here. 
So again, in that Benedict Sixteenth book, not in the Benedict Sixteenth book, but in an encyclical, I believe, by I forget which pope. I'm so sorry, guys. I'll I'll try to figure this out. <laughs> but a pope once was talking about the church and the apostles, and he was saying that the church should be subordinate to Jesus as the head. And so this is a like analogy to marriage how a woman should be subordinate to the husband but the husband should be doing what's best for the church and so i believe that's how men and women are created women should be subordinate to their husbands but not just because the husband is somehow better but more because the wife loves her husband so much and the husband knows what's best for the wife that that that's how i see it and so i believe like just even if you're not married that like a woman like our value isn't found in like oh maybe I'm really good at baseball like okay good for me like I, I was given the gift of playing baseball I'm not but <laughs> I'm just saying if like that's not what makes me a woman like what makes me a woman is um that I can I'm able to carry a baby and then people say well what if you can't no but your body was created um for a womb like we're life-giving like men aren't life-giving so that's what like makes a woman it's an adult female <laughs> and a man isn't able to do that but a man is able to pursue someone right and he pursues out of love and so that's what i believe hopefully that makes sense but i'll make a video over that but yeah that's my thoughts on gender roles and then my last question was from humberto humberto hopefully i said that right <laughs> sorry sorry guys for messing up these names but his question is, or it's more of a statement, thoughts on Catholic YouTubers. So let me go into this. <laughs> so I love Amber Rose from The Religious Hippie. If you guys don't know her, go check her out. Um, so I love her videos. I think she's really good and informative. And yeah, she, she really helped me get into um, what I am doing now for my ministry. And then I love that Catholic girl. She's also really awesome, um, Taylor from The Catholic Girl, so go check her out too. I also enjoy the commentary of Dr. Taylor Marshall, um, just because he gives good insight. He's pretty calming to watch. I don't know. I like him. And then I love Matt Walsh. Y'all should <laughs> watch Matt Walsh. He's the one that made the documentary, What is a Woman? Love him. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of really good Catholic YouTubers out there, but then there's also some that you know, are kind of extreme <laughs> in their things. And yeah, I, you just need to basically, um, you need to just like watch um, the whole spectrum of things. Well, I'm not saying like go watch really bad things, but like you need to be open-minded with a bunch of different things. Because again, if we're not open-minded with our faith, then like we might not find the truth. <laughs> so I think that you need to be careful like what you watch and like know the difference between opinions and then truths and yeah so i'd say i i love them all but yeah just be careful with certain ones you watch i also love um ascension presents like father mike schmitz talks on there and yeah i like those quick little videos so yeah just be careful with what you watch but yeah i i love catholic youtubers but anyway that is all i have for you guys today thank you so much for submitting these questions um let me know if you want me to do another q a in the future and um you can comment down below what um, videos you would like to see next. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day. I love you so much and so does God. St. Clara of Assisi, pray for us. Have a blessed day.